Good evening. We'll call the meeting to order. <clears throat> we'll begin tonight with our moment of silence. Thank you. Up next, our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have a, a pretty full agenda tonight. Uh, we have a draft agenda in front of us. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion, motion Christie. Kelly. Kelly support. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 All right. <clears throat> we have some very exciting recognition lined up for tonight, starting with the MSBOA Teacher of the Year. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Mr. Folsom. Uh, tonight we would ask uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Rebecca Kilgore to, to come to the front. Uh, uh, Mr. Folsom will meet you over by the side there. Uh, Rebecca Kilgore is in her 25th year of teaching band with the past 19 years at East Rockford Middle School. Uh, bands under her direction have consistently received superior ratings at both the Michigan State Band and Orchestra Association uh, District and State Band Festivals. Every year since its inception, East Rockford Middle School students have been selected for the Michigan All-State Band with numerous students sitting in the principal chair. The East Rockford Middle School Symphonic Band was selected to perform at the Michigan Music Conference in 2013 and 2016. She has presented sessions at the Michigan Music Conference in 2018, 2020, and 2023. Ses session topics include beginners, better, faster, stronger, self-care and flow, after the notes, and rhythms, now what? Ms. Kilgore was named the Michigan State Band and Orchestra Association State Band Teacher of the Year in January of 2023. She was also selected as the MSBOA District 10 Band Teacher of the Year in 2022 and 2015. And tonight we would like to recognize Ms. Kilgore for all the things that she has done for the students at East Rockford Middle School and for our district. So thank you very much, Ms. Kilgore. And if you would like to say anything, you, you have, uh, you know, the next uh, 45 minutes, if you like. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you to all the families and all the administrators that have supported the students in all of the music programs, um, but especially at East. It's been, you know, started with Mr. Ram and um, Mr. Warren and then now Mr. Burkholder and several assistant principals. And it's just such a great place to work in Rockford. And I just consider myself lucky every day. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Kilgore. Okay, up next, we're very excited, as you can hear the large gathering in the hallway, to have our Odyssey of the Mind world finalists here with us tonight. So, Dr. Matthews. And we are excited uh, this evening to be able to recognize our Odyssey of the Mind uh, world finalists. And uh, Mr. Folsom uh, has uh, some certificates for the coaches, and uh, we will ask the coaches to come up uh, with their teams, and so we'll... Uh, uh, I think he's getting them organized in the back there. So the first, the first team uh, with a first place uh, state finish, uh, the coaches, uh, the team is from uh, is made up of Cannonsburg and Lake students, and the coaches are D. Album and Kelly Stockmeyer. <laughs> we'll get Mr. Beckman on the on the job here. We're getting organized. Okay, that's good. D and Kelly. D, Alvin, Kelly Stockner. You actually need to come up here, Mr. Folsom, so the camera can. Uh...
This is the Cannonsburg team. It's Grant Allen, Brooke Kosanke. This is Graham Nago from Lakes. This is Dio Stockmeyer. This is Josie Wright. This is Jack Anderson and Ellison Bird. So the next uh, team, uh, a second place state finish, uh, made up of North and East students and also uh, GRPS uh, student as well, I think. And the coach is Lisa Crow. Not here. Okay. Oh, okay, uh, the next uh, team is a first place state finish uh, made up of East Rockford and Lake students. Uh, Lisa Wilner and Jeff Wilner are the coaches. team is a third place state finisher and the coach is Brenda Matuzic. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, the next team is a second place state finish uh, made up of Lake students and Rachel Potter is the coach. team is uh, first place state finish, a Rogewood team, uh, coached by uh, Jared Folsom. So I know Jared is here. <laughs> State finish, uh, North Rockford and Rogewood, uh, Jennifer Folsom and Trent DeBrock. team as well, uh, Jesse Sullivan and Amy Sullivan.
right, we have Noah Brubaker, Morgan Cataldo, Gavin Nephew, Asher Quintanilla, Asher, Mary Salo. <laughs> We're still learning the twins. <laughs> Lynn Salo and Grady Sullivan. And then our final team is also a first place uh, state finisher, East Rockford and Lakes. And the coaches are Katie Austin and Angela Breeze. not least, we wanted to also recognize and thank our Odyssey of the Mind Rockford coordinator team. So they're going to hopefully join us here in just a moment and we'll do that quickly. And Mr. Folsom, win our world championship? Uh, where are our world They are at Michigan State University in East Lansing uh, at the end of May, Memorial Weekend. So we'll be there Wednesday through Sunday, Memorial Weekend. Yeah. All right, so we have everybody awesome. So again, we just wanted to, uh, to recognize and thank, if you all don't mind, come on forward. And um, Amanda Merrill, UC Sullivan, Lisa Wilner, Pete Handworker, and Jessica Carzies, a team of people that spend countless hours uh, making this program run smoothly. And has, uh, this program has a long track record of tremendous participation and success. And we could not do it without these volunteers uh, and the, again, the countless hours that they selflessly donate for this program. So we wanted to just say thank you very much for all that you do to make this program a huge success for our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. We're glad to have you. Thank you. All right. That concludes our recognition portion. If there's anybody that is here for recognition and would now like to step out, I think most of the crowd has done that, but if there's anybody that would like to take the opportunity, now's a good time. All right. So moving on then with our uh, action items, consent agenda items, three items tonight, the KISD budgets, approval of minutes from our April 17th meeting, and presentation of bills in the amount of $10.2 million. Can I have a motion to approve our consent agenda items? I move. Support. Kelly moved. Nick, support. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Can, and I, can, I make, can I make a comment on the ISD? I'd like to remind, especially now that we're recording, I'd like to remind parents of the fantastic resource that you're already paying for. There are so many programs down at Kent ISD. They're integrated seamlessly with uh, the programs at the high school. Um, there's transportation, all of that. But if, if you think something up, there's a very high probability Kent ISD has it. So you're already paying for it. If you've not done a tour, the programs are fantastic. And uh, Rockford, two years ago, was the number one group of students were from Rockford. So it's not like it's unknown, but it, it's been a real benefit for our community, and, and I just want to remind folks of that, that, that the amount of programs that they have is surprising, to say the least. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Okay, into next section of the agenda, reports. Dr. Matthews? 
Thank you. And tonight uh, we have, I think for our final time, our student representative, Olivia. Uh, and so we'll ask you to give your report. <laughs> so this weekend we had prom. Um, it was at Frederick Meyer Gardens this year, so it was a change of venue. Um, everyone loved it. It was a great space. It was open, big, because we have a lot of students that go to prom. It was amazing. We had the greenhouses and butterfly rooms to use. And I just put out some pictures. That second one up top is me and my friends taking pictures. It was, it was really fun. Okay. And then we have Senior Sunset that is being planned right now by the Juniors and Student Council. We did this last year, and they just have a bunch of yard games out for the seniors to play, like hand jam, spike ball, cornhole, just all the other stuff. And they're getting food trucks as well. So they're getting Ali's Donuts, El Jalapeno, which is a taco truck, and then sweet juice ice creams. And it is next Thursday, May 18th. It was a lot of fun last year when I helped out and cleaned it. And then we have a Relay for Life fundraiser coming up. The Relay for Life team is hosting a fundraiser from May 8th through May 16th. And every dollar donated by a student will get an entry to a raffle to pie 105 staff members in the face at the high school. <laughs> and every one dollar that you donate is a vote. And then once $2,500 is raised, Dr. Matthews will be pied. What? Race. I don't remember that. <laughs> Day. <laughs> and then we have our final countdown for seniors. We only have nine more days, but after today, we have eight. <laughs> so <laughs> the next few events we have are Senior Sunset, which I just talked about. And then the Senior Parade is when all of us seniors get to go to our elementary schools and walk through, and then as well go to our middle schools and walk through for a final time, which I think is awesome. And then graduation is Monday, May 22nd, and after grad is Tuesday, May 23rd. And then just some spring, spring sports. There, we've had a lot of wins and very successful. And then I just wanted to thank the board for all of your support throughout this school year. It's been such a good opportunity, and I've learned a lot, and I'm super grateful for this experience. So, yeah. <laughs> Any questions? I have a question. Yes. Is that GV uh, SU? Yes. Little, little I am student? going to Grand Valley this fall and I am studying criminal justice and psychology. Yes. Okay. Congratulations. Great. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Well, Olivia, on behalf of the board, I wanted to say thank you very much for all that you've done for your class and for your school and for our district this year. We certainly have enjoyed having you here. Uh, and your reports are always informative and helpful for us. And we really appreciate the time and energy you put into making those special for us. And Thank we have a small gift for you, a gift card. Thank you. Just love, just love, just love, just love, and we've all signed it. Oh. Lots of words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Okay, up next is our collaborative team reports. Uh, thank you, Mr. Folsom. Uh, tonight our elementary report is presented by Ms. McGinn, our Lakes uh, Elementary Principal. New format, do I stand to this? Uh, we, uh, the, podium? the podium. The podium. More formal then. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I just wanted to take a deep breath because it's May, and in May uh, we get very busy, as you know, uh, but it's really difficult when it's 80 degrees the week after spring break because our students' bodies automatically think, oh, it's warm, school is over, and it's not. And so we've made it thus far and we're doing well. I want to share with you tonight uh, some events on the academic side of things, on the community side of things, and those fun, interesting things that just bring uh, joy to students' faces. So academically, we are committed to finishing our year strong. We're looking at curriculum, we're reviewing our standards and our benchmarks, we're making sure we're ready to go, that our students are ready to go when they get to that next grade level. We've been working on uh, several events like wax museums and famous American presentations and spring musicals and art shows, and we've been having field trips all to enrich the learning of our students. And we're hoping that some of those solid events and solid uh, uh, efforts show up on our spring testing with MSTEP and NWA. We're right in the thick of all of that right now. 
On the community side, you've heard a little bit about Relay for Life tonight. Our elementary buildings are also involved in those events. I didn't know Dr. Matthews was um, a, a token for a pie. We might have to tap into that in the future. Um, but we're doing like things like Chalk the Walk and uh, mini relays in our buildings and locker tag sales and luminary um, bag sales. And as a uh, my mother-in-law passing away from cancer, that's something that um, we look forward to as a family and as a school community. Uh, we're, and as far as community goes there, our buildings have been going through some cleanups with our PTOs to spruce up for spring. And our elementary principals have been hiring uh, the very next Rockford community residents um, as teachers. And we've come across so far seven quality folks to come and join us from neighboring districts with lots of experience and <coughs> good work to bring to our community. So the fun events, right? Family picnics, uh, PTO, uh, food truck rallies, girls on the run, 5Ks coming, school carnivals, field day, and then our final capstone event or all of our fifth grade celebrations as we say farewell to our fifth grade students up to middle school. And I always try to not cry at that day because it's something that's meaningful and special and they move on and they leave us. So uh, what questions can I answer for you today? Can I congratulate you on several of the OM's teams for working like yeah. I know there are quite a few. And my daughter is one of them. Yeah. Cool. So I'm so excited about that. Yeah. Cool. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Our secondary report will be by Mr. Hosford, our Rockford High School principal. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dr. Matthews, Board of Education, the Central Office. It's great to be up here to give you a little May update. Uh, first and foremost, um, with our middle schools. They're finishing strong with that NWEA testing. Uh, they're going to use that data to um, you know, help with intervention strategies and to help with school improvement focus areas. It's really good data and they're excited to kind of dive into that uh, at the end of this year to help springboard us into uh, some great work next year. Uh, the spring band, choir, and orchestra concerts are happening all in the next couple of weeks, and that's always a fun thing for our, our students, a culmination of a year's worth of work, and I uh, know that they look forward to that. Sixth grade students are getting ready for uh, sixth grade camp. <coughs> Uh, the week of the 22nd at Camp Manitoulin. It's a time-honored tradition at Rockford Middle Schools, and uh, I know Liv just uh, lit up, and she remembers that probably very fondly. Uh, it's a cool thing for our sixth grade students. Seventh grade students are going to the White Cap on Friday, and they are going to hear the Star Spangled Banner um, played by our band and orchestra students at the game. So that's a pretty neat experience for our seventh grade students. And then another time on our tradition is our eighth grade students will be attending Michigan's Adventure to kind of cap off a great school year for them. Uh, and they'll be doing that um, on May 26th. Uh, at the high school level, all, uh, both student councils at the Freshman Center and at the 1012 building um, are organizing a great set of activities uh, this week for National Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, the Board of Ed Education, uh, you guys in our district administration recognize our staff last week as well, and they definitely feel loved and appreciate all of your support um, you know, this year. Um, and like what Minnie said, uh, the Dine 12 level is excitedly planning some end of the year activities and celebrations, including academic letter ceremonies coming up, retirement celebrations, and the senior graduation ceremony, which we'll get into a little bit later. The spring musical, which is a neat thing that we did this year, uh, first year doing it, it it involves 8th, 9th, and 10th graders. So we're getting that 8th uh, grade student you know, in, involved in the fine arts program uh, at the end of their uh, middle school career, hopefully springboarding them into some interest at, at high school. Um, so their musical, uh, 13, uh, has performances this week, Thursday through Sunday. Uh, students are uh, right now having some dinner, and they're going to be uh, finishing up some rehearsals until like 9.30 today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, and then they start with their performances, so they're working really hard and are excited for the performances. Uh, we do have one very special guest performer uh, in this musical. We'd like to thank Dr. Matthews for his involvement. I'm not going to give away his role. I would encourage all of you to show up and see what his role is. Uh, he's been working extremely hard as well. We'll see. <laughs> Um, one neat thing that the Freshman Center is doing is celebrating Student Appreci Appreciation Week next week. Uh, students will have the opportunity to earn special raffle tickets. They can use it at the week's end for teacher-donated gifts and experiences. Really neat thing the Freshman Center does. 
Students are also going to participate in a special lunch activity with some rewards. They're also planning a staff versus student basketball and dodgeball competition. I do see one um, staff member from the freshman center here. I'll just say you better stretch early and often. Good luck with that. Should be really fun. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'd like to recognize at the 10-12 level is our um, our Rocket League esports team recently took second place at the Michigan High School esports league competition down at Western Michigan, and uh, it was a very competitive match. Uh, so it's the it's the first team to win four games, and um, all I think we got to five or six games, and all of them were real uh, competitive, and they did a great job. But it was a real neat venue, um, and 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 something that our students will. Um, definitely remember. So uh, again, appreciate your support of esports at Rockford High School. And then finally, let me be the first to wish our, our mothers here today a happy Mother's Day uh, this weekend. So thank you for that. What questions might you have? Comment on esports. Uh, the board shouldn't be surprised if uh, we see proposals in the future. It's grown so much. I mean, so much so that down at Western, they converted a theater completely and renamed it eSports Arena. And the vibe, the vibe was really cool, but our program has grown, you know, and there, you know, I remember tears from your predecessor the first time they had an event. Um, there were 28 or 30 of our students and our principal had never seen like 20 of them ever before. <laughs> so that was very moving for him because that means they had very little contact, bad or good or involvement. So. It's powerful. We've taken how many classrooms now? Two, three. So we've taken three classrooms in the space of four or five years. It's it's growing, but uh, don't be surprised to see some physical changes to maybe some spaces. They were highly encouraged to uh, send something up our way, but you know that program is good, and we like to expand opportunities for students that want to participate. There are a lot of new things that we've done that are off the charts, much like BTR and now eSports. I just wanted to say that, uh, don't be shy. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, so we just recognized two of our eSports uh, athletes. Uh, they both uh, received scholarships, one to Michigan State and one to Michigan Tech. Um, so it, it is a, it's an incredible opportunity for our students. So thank you for supporting that. Thank you, Mr. Hosford. All right, up next is our committee reports. We had a couple of board subcommittees uh, active in the last month, so we'll start with uh, a readout from the policy committee. Christy? Yes, we met on May 2nd and May uh, 5th, and we kind of went through creating a board operating procedures manual that we've kind of put together so that, you know, new board members, and, and we have kind of like a living document that kind of documents what we're, where our focus should be, the focus of the board, um, kind of our, our roles and responsibilities, but also how we handle different things and we visit different buildings. And so we kind of, we're, tonight we're gonna do a first reading of that, that document. And I think everybody's probably had a chance to kind of review that. And then we'll make some, continue to make some edits and some changes to that. So um, I've already got some good, some good feedback on mm -hmm. that, but I think it's a really good place to start. Also some board norms, just kind of um, something that we have never had before, but that um, a lot of districts do have, and just kind of a, a nice working document that we can continue to kind of build on every year. Yep, good questions for Christy. Thanks, Christy. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to talk more under new business on the first reading of the operating procedure, but any questions about the policy committee? Okay. Great, thanks. And up next, uh, curriculum, and Kelly's gonna cover that one for us. Yeah, thank you. Um, we had a, an exceptional meeting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that the highlight was the getting to play with the math manipulatives and uh, like a, a, a definitely a lesson um, on, on how they work and how we're using math manipulatives to learn in the classroom actively. Um, we definitely covered um, the expanded AP programming, which is really exciting. I'm, I'm excited that my own uh, student will get to take part in the 10th grade AP seminar. This is a really, really exciting opportunity for all of our students. Um, but we also covered um, this kind of like curriculum and resource adoption process map that's in front of you. And I think that this is a, a great educational tool for, for our understanding about the process through which um, we bring on new curriculum and as we look at new things, including the new AP seminar class, um, just that we have a really proactive approach as a, as a district and how we review 
um, new uh, curriculum concepts and, and how we kind of approach it from a very professional place where we're meeting state standards um, so that we're teaching to the rigor that, that's guaranteed and viable for every one of our students. And um, I really want to thank Mr. Ram for, for kind of providing this educational tool for us to kind of understand that process, but also let you know that if you have questions about how this process works, that Mr. Ram would be happy to answer those questions. <laughs> Supposed to smile when they say very happy to answer them. <laughs> I am, absolutely. I think I explained in the past, I'm proud of the process. Thorough has targeted outcomes, and um, you know, it's been working for us. So we'll continue to do that, make tweaks where necessary, but happy to talk to anybody at any time. Yeah, I appreciate it too. You know, one of the questions we asked in the prior curriculum discussion was like, big picture, what, what do we, we know what we're looking at now, but what have we looked at recently? What's coming up in the future? Is, and, and this is done in kind of a rolling cadence, right? And so we had said it'd be good to have kind of a roadmap view looking over a period of time and appreciate you putting that together and kind of take us through that. And like most things, I, I described something in very simple terms, but when you look at the, the, the depth and the detail of curriculum, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a vast array of things that that are going on at any given time and, and you know, planned for um, into, into future periods too. But it was good to see that perspective. I appreciate you putting that together. So uh, questions for yeah. Kelly? I have one, it's just a comment because it's good to see the flow of the process for curriculum um, because it's gonna become uh, even more important. You know, it's no surprise to you, there, the outstanding issue, not issue, the outstanding deliverable that we'll have and it's not due yet, so don't take this the wrong way, is the next big phase of construction is the high school campus. And there were a lot of discussions way back when about, you know, we were gonna lead that construction with curriculum. So that's an important thing for this board to hear um, in that there were, we pretty much gave a whiteboard at what that campus, no matter how many buildings are there, what that campus might look like and what it might do. but. However it's approached will be an approach that's led by curriculum, the changes or status quo, whatever it is. But um, that's why it's, it's really important to see this because that's the process that we'll be going through with something that has um, much more impact than, than adding you know, a, a course here or there. This is a, a pretty big seminal moment for us and super excited about it. But, that's why I, I think this time yeah. and this is super. And this, the piece on the back of there includes kind of this like how we push through the path, including the instructional design, which is what you're talking about. And, uh, I've been really um, inspired by uh, Mike's leadership in the new elementary building in the same kind of instructional design perspective and I think really holistic 360 degrees of learning um, in everything between how we choose the chairs and, and the layout of the building. It's been really fun to watch, thank you. Good stuff, thanks. All right, uh, up next is our summer learning report. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Mr. Folsom. And uh, we will turn to uh, Mr. Ram. Thank you, Dr. Matthews. Um, I have a team of people that are assembling here that are um, really the people behind the summer learning program. I get the fortunate ability to introduce them um, and uh, they have done really the hard work again um, in structuring our summer learning program. So. Um, as written to you in uh, my memo, uh, in 2021, we really launched a very robust um, summer learning program led by Sharon Wells and her, uh, the team that worked on it at, at all levels. And it's really laid this foundation for our expectations for the future. So, you know, I think you consider the old school summer learning program as like the movie Breakfast Club where you have kids that are there and they're dreading to be there and it's punitive, right? And uh, we just, we know that that's not best practice. We know that there's opportunity for students to learn um, in a way that accelerates um, the, uh, their learning over the long duration of the summer. It's highly engaging. We have a variety of opportunities. We try to make it uh, uh, convenient for families by uh, adding some transportation and food and some of these details that they'll share with you. So very much uh, impressed again with the summer learning program. Our community is very well serviced by the opportunities here and their um, enrollment is open currently. And so Sharon and her team will talk with you a little bit about what we have to offer this summer. 
Thank you, Mike, and uh, appreciate the time. Dr. Matthews, Central Office and Board of Education. This is always an exciting time for us. Um, we're getting ready for summer, and we all know that there are opportunities for our students in the summer to prevent the summer slide. Kids can lose one to three months worth of learning in the summer. Uh, we also know that summer is a great time to accelerate learning and provide them opportunities that um, they may not have otherwise. Privilege should never be why students are given opportunities in the summer. It should be because they're provided for them, and we're excited to do that. So we have kind of four focus areas that we um, have for you for summer learning. Targeted is very intentional. It's very um, intensive, and it's invitational. So these are students who may qualify for some high intensity programs in the summer, especially in the areas of ELA and math. And we do that from the kindergarten, or actually DK level all the way through high school. We also have choice. So these are our exploration and learning camps where students can come for a few weeks and learn the content areas, but through um, something that might be a theme like cooking or math or science and just have some fun with that. We have community engagement, which I'll show you some examples of later in the presentation, but that would be like our Rockford Book Bus, where the whole community can be involved. And then our home, we actually provide some mailings to some of our kids all summer long, which I'll talk about as well. Some of you might wonder how, how we're able to do such intensive summer learning, and uh, why haven't we done this all along? And that's because we've been given a gift of money through the federal government, um, which are called ESSER funds, and the ESSER funds are um, totally, we're kind of given um, the opportunity to increase summer learning specifically. So they actually allocate funds for that. Um, we spent the summer of 2021 and 22 with our ESSER 2 funding, and the next two summers will be with ESSER 3 funding. You'll see it's been seven, eight hundred thousand um, dollars because of that opportunity of food and transportation and things that cost. Um, we, use, we also use all Rockford certified staff members to do our um, teaching. So we're going to just go through the district summer learning programs, and I just categorize them by elementary, middle school, high school, and special education. Later, we'll have some friends sharing. So at the elementary level, we have targeted ELA and math. That's happening at Crestwood this year, and it's for DK through five. Again, that's invitational. We also have um, something brand new this summer. We are offering over 100 individual tutoring sessions, one-on-one -on -one tutoring with our Rockford Public School teachers in the areas of the ELA and math. That opened up on May 1, and we already have some waiting lists. So it's pretty exciting. Um, so these will be Rockford teachers. It will be at Rowood Elementary, and it's uh, six sessions over a period of three weeks. And so we're really trying to target individual needs of students, and we're excited about those offerings. Um, exploration camps are those fun two-week um, sessions that's also going to be at Rowood. Parents can sign up for our pre-K through third grade fill up immediately. We have a little bit of room in our four and five, so it's been a very popular option. And then Kids Read Now is that um, mailbox option I talked to you about. So there's a company that works with about half the school districts in Michigan, and what they do is they mail kids books. They get eight to nine books over the summer, delivered to their home, and each book comes with um, a bookmark that has like a, a barcode or a scan code on it that provides the parents with like questions they can ask about the book and comprehension activities. Um, and they get delivered right to their home. So we're paying um, this company for those books to be delivered. There's significant research if kids read just five or six books in the summer that it reduces loss. And this company has done that research and provides a lot for the kids in our state. We've chosen to do that with all first and second graders at Rockford. So this is our third year that we're doing that. Um, middle school, we also have targeted ELA and math. Again, invitational. And then we have our win camps, which are those kind of thematic camps. They're a little bit less, um, they're a little bit more difficult to fill, I should say, because middle school students are very busy. And they have lots of activities to choose from. Um, so they're not quite as popular as our elementary camps, but we still have sign-ups available. And then we are also doing individual ELA tutoring with sixth grade. And I'm going to let Brenda talk about 
the high school program. I'm Lauren DeFace, and I oversee the secondary uh, summer learning program. This is my third year. That's how much fun it is. I keep coming back for more. We have 18 certified Rockford High School teachers that teach, and also most of them are have this is their third year as well. They all keep coming back. So we have uh, we offer several different things. We do credit recovery in all the content areas, and also health. Um, Students can take up to, they can take two classes, so they can get back two credits if they need, or two classes that they need over the course of the summer. We have, a, our program is five weeks and it is in person, uh, 8.45 to noon. So they have to come, they're in person, they're in small groups with a certified Rockford teacher to earn their credit back. We also have electives, so we call them open credit and we might, we have PE, art, communications, economics and government those again are all graduation requirements so we offer those student can do that as credit recovery to earn towards graduation or they can just take it as an open credit class we have students do that so they can fit in maybe a co-op kctc they want to be in multiple um, like they want to do choir they want to do band so they get knock the elective out of the way. Again, all taught by Rockford teachers certified in that subject area. We also offer workshops. These are one to two weeks and we try to make them really specialized and interesting. So we have fiber arts, we have robotics, we have acting, and uh, these are one to two weeks. They're taught by, again, our certified teachers who have a passion for that subject area. And we do offer SAT prep as well. This is by one of our teachers who is trained in SAT prep. It's two weeks, it's a workshop, and they receive the big, <coughs> thick SAT prep book as well. So we usually land on about 150 to 180 kids in the summer. Uh, like I said, they come five weeks every day. Last year, our attendance rate was 96% every day. So they come and we also had 96% of our students are in credit who signed up. So it's a really successful model and I have to give all the credit to the teachers because they are outstanding and they do amazing things with the kids. So they make it fun. Thank you. And Michelle Corey is gonna to talk to us a little bit about our um, expanded special education opportunities this summer. Good evening, uh, I'm Michelle Corey. This is my first year as the district teacher consultant for special education. Um, this is also my first year overseeing uh, summer learning for special education, so <laughs> how that goes. Um, our goal for summer learning for special education is for students to maintain and to demonstrate uh, growth in their individual goals and objectives um, through their uh, individual education plan. We have targeted um, ELA and math at the elementary and middle school levels. Um, we are we figure we're able to support up to uh, 30 to 40 elementary students, and right now we're at 29 students enrolled and we're still going. Um, we're able to support uh, with our staffing up to 20-ish kids at the middle school level, and we currently have 15 and still enrolling. Um, we, are, we are also offering the tutoring option this summer for students um, at the elementary and high school level. Um, in each, we have two, two uh, staff supporting our um, our tutoring program and we have each staff member supporting 10 kids and we are full um, at capacity there. Uh, we are offering social work support at all levels but I have a heavy um, focus on the elementary. Um, our support, um, social workers will, will target the, the targeted uh, groups um, but they'll also, um, we're in the process of forming some lunch bunch groups and some structured play time groups as well. Um, we will be offering, we are offering speech services. We have four committed speech pathologists right now. Two are full-time, two are gonna be part-time. Um, we will be servicing a lot of uh, students through our speech path program this summer. Um, our speech path will be running 30 minute sessions, one day a week, one to two days a week, depending. Um, and we will be focusing on our uh, SIP program and our, um, our early childhood as well. We have two specific programs, our ASD program, our um, Autism Spectrum Disorder program, that will run out of um, Parkside, that runs every year. Right now we have uh, 11 students participating, and it's a full day program. We also have, um, we're gonna be uh, offering a, a program for our cognitive impaired students who are 
currently um, operating and housed out of Lakes, but we will be running out of Burlwood over the summer. We currently have five students signed up for that, um, which is great. Uh, so in total, we have six teachers for our targeted and program um, uh, programs. We have uh, six itinerants, two tutors, and five paraprofessionals. Any questions for special education? Thank you, Michelle. Yes. So we couldn't do this without amazing directors, like um, the ladies behind me here, and there's several others in the district. Also, Lisa Jacobs, who's our Director of Community Services, um, plays a significant role. So we meet on a regular basis, and we use a lot of her staff for the sign-ups, and we just really appreciate that um, collaboration, and we couldn't do that without all of us working together. And food service, transportation, right? All of the departments in the district. So just a few community programs for you. Um, you might be familiar with the Hillview Summer Learning Program. We have some paid employees that work at the Hillview Learning Center, but we also have hundreds of volunteers. And you'll see that sign up come up pretty soon. Um, and we do some math and some reading um, for a six week period. Typically math will be two days a week and reading will be two days a week. It's very informal. All the students there are welcome um, in the whole community and they come when they can. And um, we try to make a difference with those kids. We also have our Rockford Book Bus. Uh, last year we had 4,300 students on our book bus, which is amazing. Um, we've added some several community events like the uh, Rockford or the Reading Rocks Festival, which is always the Saturday that right after school gets out. Um, they went to the farmer's market. It happened to rain that day. It's not going to rain this year. <laughs> um, they were in the start of summer parade and all of those things. So it's just been um, a great opportunity. We look forward to our third summer um, with the book bus. And Rachel DeKuyper does an amazing job running that bus. And finally, we have some getting ready for kindergarten classes. Um, they're one week, four days, and these um, kiddos that are coming into DK and K come and they just learn what it's like to go to school. Well, how do I line up? What does it mean to sit in a circle? What am I supposed to do when the teacher's reading me a book, right? And we just have them experience that, and we're offering two weeks sessions of that as well. So as you can see, we have multiple opportunity for, opportunities for our students in our community. Um, we're very excited. We've had success in the last few summers. We're excited to keep that uh, growing and adding the tutoring in. We're very excited about it as well. And we will take any questions that you may have. Nick? Me again. I heard uh, full-time equivalents for everything but K, uh, DK through elementary. Do you know how many we have as, for as far as how many students or staff? No, staff. Um, for adults at the DK through five, it's at least 15. Okay. Um, but we have multiple support staff because we do um, enrichment. Right. And playground and busing and. Sure. Yeah. Okay, that helps. Yeah, but certified. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Do you know the name of the company that's doing the Kids Read Now program? It's actually called that. Oh, okay. So if you Google it, it will come up. And it's a, um, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. I just watched him on a video this week. But he gives a really good explanation of the research behind it. But they're working with half the schools in our state, so I'm glad we got on early. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank thanks. Anything else? I'm excited to see the book bus again. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Gets it, everybody excited. It's a huge <laughs> source of pride. Uh, yeah. you know, the kids are excited. I mean, they talk about it, look forward to seeing it. So I think when you have kids excited about reading in the summer, yeah. it's, a, you know, it's such a huge success. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we're excited. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, up next is our retirement report. Dr. Matthews. That will turn to Ms. Corey Wilson Crump. Yes, I just wanted to share an informal report with you around hiring uh, and retirements. And so you'll recall last year we had uh, a new teacher cohort of about 70, 70 staff uh, because we had a really high retirement. Year, the previous year. So um, I have had some trepidation uh, earlier this winter around how many staff we might lose to retirement and to attrition, just staff leaving for other places or other vocations. Um, and so uh, preliminarily, we really only have about 20 retirees this year, which is wonderful news. 
Um, when we look at our staff seniority lists, that does make sense um, that we've had a couple of big hiring bubbles kind of move through, uh, and now we're getting to a place where we might settle into you know maybe 20 to 30 retirements a year. Um, of those retirements, will be about half support staff and about half certified staff. That's what that will look like. So over the next couple of months, well, few months really, um, we'll be meeting together once a month, and you're going to see a retirement list come out at our next meeting that will have some of those retirees on them. And then as more become known, you'll see another list in July. And then you're also going to start to see some certified staff coming through. You see a few of them on the agenda today. Um, but just to make sure that you all understand the process that we undertake when we get retirements and we get people that resign and how that process works. I wanted to be sure to kind of share some of those numbers with you, but more than that, um, give you an opportunity to ask any questions you might have about what that process specifically looks like for us here in Rockford, because it is a fast moving time in HR, kind of between May and August. And so at the very front end of that, if you have specific questions about process, I think Dr. Matthews asked if I just put this on the agenda to make sure that everyone understood. I've got no uh, major questions about the, um, the process, but I was just curious, knowing that we're in or going into and kind of our uh, teacher shortage, I was curious, you know, early stages, how has the reception been for, you know, putting out Post and getting uh, getting applicants for for rank. Very good so far. Um, we have most of the, the the known postings out right now, um, so you can find those on our website. <coughs> Uh, we anticipate, you know, hopefully that we would have applicants like in the hundreds for um, positions like general elementary teacher where there are a lot of people that are certified in the state and that's coming to fruition. So we are having applicants in the hundreds, which is wonderful. Um, some of the positions like at the high school where Tom is leading a hiring committee um, or at the um, River Valley Academy where Lisa is running a hiring committee, um, we would expect for dozens of applicants per position because those positions are a little bit niche, right? Like um, you might be a AP math teacher. You know, or you might be a biology teacher. So we wouldn't expect to see in the hundreds there. We would expect to see in the dozens. And those are coming to fruition as well. Um, so we're lucky, grateful, and excited about those hiring pools that we're looking at so far. Um, we're also in process to um, hire an assistant principal at East Rockford Middle School, and you will see um, that probably on the next agenda as well. Um, we had over 60 applicants that were minimally qualified for that position, and that's the first time um, as an administrator that I have seen qualified assistant principal candidates eclipse 50 candidates. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I think a teacher shortage is definitely coming, and I think all of the national and statewide trends suggest that that's true. Um, we're very fortunate in Rockford for this hiring season to be able to really find some great candidates. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. The 20 retirees, do we expect that number to go up much? or A little bit. Um, I think usually we see a few more retirements come because of people's personal life circumstances. You know, maybe they didn't um, anticipate retiring, but now they would. Uh, what we're going to see more than that is you're going to see a few resignations come through. Maybe as somebody here gets a job as an assistant principal elsewhere, or someone's spouse gets a job in another state and they need to resign from employment over the summertime, or a variety of reasons. So from here on out, we might see a few <coughs> retirements, but we'll probably Probably see more um, just resignations. Got it. Helpful. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Corey. Okay. All right. Up next is our KISD board. So in your board packet this evening, you see a resolution that would uh, designate a district election representative. Uh, the ISD uh, will have a vote uh, coming up in June. And uh, the process uh, is the ISD biennial election will take place on Monday, June 5th at 6 p.m. at the Kent ISD building. Um, and one member of our board will need to be physically, physically present uh, to cast a vote on behalf of our board. 
Uh, the resolution requires one meeting to review and another meeting for adoption. So tonight it is presented for review and then uh, we will need to uh, probably have a special meeting later this month. Uh, today actually uh, was the election filing deadline and so we don't know who the candidates are at this point. So when we get that information we will share it with the board uh, but uh, this is a process that Kent ISD goes through on a biennial basis. Um, most of you are probably more familiar with this than I am <laughs> because you've been in Kent County uh, longer than I have. Uh, Nick, I know, for example, uh, is very familiar with this, and, and so I don't know if I left anything out, but... No, I, I you know, I, I think for the general folks to understand that it's not a public election. The school boards in Kent County actually elect the ISD or the Intermediate School District. Some places are called Reese's. Here in Kent County, the school boards, the public school boards, of which there are 20 in Kent County, the boards elect the members. Um, and currently sitting on the board is a former Rockford School Board member, Laura Fett. <coughs> so, um, you know, you will see the candidates. We've heard from two already, um, both of whom I would lobby for um, and we can talk about that, you know, at, at the decision meeting. But both candidates who have applied thus far, um, I wouldn't need to see any others. I could make an argument for either one. Um, but it is an important thing. It's unfortunate that we've never had to do a special meeting because we used to have two board, two board meetings a month. So this feels different. It's only because we have one board meeting. State law, you only get one month to do this. So it is a little awkward when we only have one meeting a month. Um, Mona Shorts and I have been screaming about it for eight years, but it's not a big fish, so it gets ignored. Anyway, so. So we don't have to pick our designee tonight. We'll we do, do not. That at the we next meeting. Yep. We okay. will do that at the next meeting. Uh, so you'll it. pick your designee and also identify who they would vote who for. Who they would vote for. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it's a board decision yeah. on who goes and who casts the vote. Yep. Other questions on that? No? Okay. Up next is our OAK construction update. Turn to Mr. Cuneo. Thanks, Dr. Matthews. And uh, we have two representatives from OAK, Jared Goss, who is the, uh, I would say, the new elementary uh, OAK guy, the, the, the daily supervisor, and then his boss, Jeremy Amshay. I uh, want them to talk a little bit about a new elementary school, but then also give an overall update of what, what has happened and what we are looking at doing. Uh, in the construction process. So I'll turn it over to you, Jerry. Thank you, Mr. Greenhill. So um, we have a short 45 minute presentation. <laughs> and I'm Jeremy Anshay, I'm the Chief Operating Officer at OAK. We've got some pictures on the new elementary and then some other projects. We will post this to the blog as well. Uh, if you go to the home page on the Rockford website, there's a blog there, which is to be posted if we go through kind of fast today. So with that, let's start with Jerry. Awesome, I'm Jerry Goss, uh, Project Superintendent at OAK, working on the new elementary here. So run through some pictures, give me an update up there, and uh, go from there, so. Uh, new elementary is the, the brand new entrance there. Um, kind of going into that space, you have, uh, you know, open foyer, open space, secure vestibule, uh, just like all the other schools are set up now. Um, bus drop off, pick off, all, pick up around there. Um, this is uh, looking into the learning commons area, nice open space, open structure, all exposed structure above, um, and then it goes out to the, uh, the outdoor space in the back there, that'll be another picture later showing that, but there'd be a nice outdoor learning area out there, uh, kind of a little bit of tiered seat in the uh, outdoor area there, so very cool space um, out there. Um, this is a picture of the DK room, um, uh, DK pine group area, it's been really cool to see these as they come out of the ground and go up, uh, you, spot, you spoke to the uh, building around curriculum and learning. It's kind of cool to see these come out of the ground and, and see those spaces come to life, right? With, with the classrooms around uh, these common areas that everybody can go out and teach in. So um, this is exterior space, bricks going on. We got a lot of the brick done in the building um, on the exterior. Building shelves pretty much complete except for one side of the building which still come up with walls. Um, spoke about this, this is the, uh, the lower L area here with the classrooms around the perimeter and then you have the big open group instruction area in the, in the middle there. Um, roughly 3,000 gallons of paint will be used on this project. <laughs> so it's a pretty cool fun fact there. Uh, this is that outdoor space looking at the back of the learning commons there. Um, we'll have sidewalks all around there, that back area, a little green space, that, little, that tiered seating area will be out there for uh, outdoor learning there. So 
Um, this is uh, kind of the area we're at, kind of where we're still coming out of the ground, getting the structure up. And then uh, again, where we're putting the structure up, this is actually the upper L area over here, which is kind of a mirror image of that lower L area with the, uh, with the classroom setups. Eight, eight masons on average out there, they're doing about 600 bricks a day, each person can do that, so they're, they're flying through it. So, uh, gym's gonna be a lot like every other school uh, in the district here. And then cafeteria, able to serve up to 200 students. I don't know if you'll use that many, have that many students in there, but you, you got the capabilities of doing that. So, that's the new All right. <clears throat> the next project is the athletics. Uh, we moved into the athletics spring break. Uh, I do promise you the stairs will be done. Uh, we were kind of waiting on a couple parts and pieces, but at the end of this week, they'll be pulling those stairs, and so we'll be able to use them starting next week. Be um, ready for the state track team? Uh, yep, I was told that better be ready. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's also a stone open as well, too, so again, it's a main entrance. There's no, um, those yeah. concrete that was there before kind of got deteriorated, this wall has to melt in as well, too. So, um, again, this will also have a security vestibule. If you guys remember the way it was set up before, you had to go into the existing room or into the existing school, and there's really no way to stop it. So now it'll be set up just like the main vestibule there as far as security vestibule goes. Uh, yeah, athletic office picture there, um, picture of the hallway that kind of goes through there. The cool thing about this conference room that's there now actually has a window going into the existing pool area. So that whole this team can kind of keep uh, their eyes on athletics in the pool area, along with this office in the corner. Uh, this is probably the Biggest mechanical room we've ever built, but it houses the uh, the snowmelt system and all the mechanical stuff of the existing high school as well too. And then a big portion of it is to get the athletic classroom. And the main floor, when you, uh, on the main pool level, there's an athletic classroom along with storage there too. So that's something that the coaches are really excited about using as well. Uh, the next one is the baseball and softball improvements. Um, as a parent of a daughter who plays softball, this is probably my exciting ones because there's new parking lot. Uh, it's 156 spaces that go along that side, that side so you don't have to park in the brewer or along Brewer Street anymore, so it's a little safer. Um, and this is kind of the first phase of it too. This summer, after the, um, the meets are all done, is when we'll start doing the baseball and softball turf as well too. So Again, it's all lighted. The lights do shine towards the parking lot and not at the neighbor's house. Uh, and there's the fence that goes up there as well. Uh, Crestwood is actually going along really well. The classroom addition is, is moving along really well. Um, you'll see the pictures on the inside. We actually have paint on the walls, uh, first mechanical is pretty much done, basically ceilings, casework, and some windows, and that'll be ready for students here in the fall. And then the gym addition there is too, is the bricks on the outside, the concrete's on the inside, and the gym will go up pretty fast as well too. We are, like anybody, is dealing with some equipment, equipment delays, so we're kind of working through that stuff, but that'll also be ready for this fall to use as well. So uh, that's kind of interior of the gym. Another couple of pictures of the inside of the school, a view from the gym and the school, another mechanic room and the storage room there as well. So a couple of other projects that we have going uh, this summer will be the transportation building. So once school is out, uh, the buses are either made at the transportation building and the canopy, but we'll start doubling the existing building. And then the, the garage portion of it will move over to the, to the maintenance building, but the bus drivers will stay there as affordable classrooms. Uh, the scoreboard at the high school, so scoreboard, sound system in the high school gym. And then the junior lot, the high school also get repaved. So again, and oh, any North Rocket Mills will get started with their addition starting in the summer as well too. So again, a lot happening. Uh, any given time in the summer, it's, it's pretty cool to see there's, there's gonna be over 200 construction workers just in the, in the district of Rockford. Um, all, again, it's, a lot of them live in this district and have been working in before, so it's, it's gonna be nice. Cooking up. That's good. Yeah. And this will be on the website? Uh, this will be on the website, yes. Starting? Uh, Tomorrow. As soon as Mr. Cuneo can get it right. right. And I think you had asked before, yeah, everything's on schedule and on budget. So that's good. Uh, I think I <laughs> Thank you. All right, that concludes our report section. We're in a new business. Uh, first item, certified staff. Ms. Corey wilson uh, Yes, we just talked about retirements and resignations, and um, I shared with you that our hiring teams and our principals are well underway in reviewing postings um, and the applicants and then making some decisions. And so you'll see four high quality candidates that have been identified by our team uh, and their resumes are included in your packet and they represent the best for each one of those positions that we're recommending them to fill. So um, each 
element or each principal uh, worked through a team using our district hiring guide, which is a protocol based hiring practice that has rubrics and questions. Um, and at the end of that comes a candidate. And so these are the four candidates that we have for you this evening. And again, um, as I shared with you before, we'll have more in June, more in July. Hopefully, we'll be done in August. So, <laughs> and then I'm happy to field any questions you may have about these candidates, but that is the um, recommendation Thank of the district. So we have a recommendation that we would like the board to approve these four hires tonight. Okay, can I have a motion to I approve? Move. Kelly, I second. support by Christy. Any other discussion? Okay, all in favor, raise your hand, say aye. 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 Okay. And uh, Ms. Russell Crawford, the uh, band director, will actually start this summer, correct? Uh, um, yep, she will start this summer in a limited capacity um, as our band uh, does their summer band camp and puts their uh, marching band performance together. But she's technically um, won't be on contract until our first instructional day. Got it. Okay, up next is our Roadwood Power Easement. Uh, highlight of the evening, uh, Mr. Cuneo. We <laughs> I like to bring those to you. Um, as everybody knows, or just to remind the board that behind where the portables are, at Roadwood, we're actually going to be removing those portables and, and putting a, a new gymnasium. Uh, uh, with remodeling to the existing gymnasium to become a full-time uh, cafeteria area. We currently have a power easement that goes directly underneath where those portables are, that sort of uh, blacktop area. Because of this new addition, we're basically routing that around the building itself on the perimeter so that there's access to it in case we ever have to do anything in the future. This is required by Consumers Power or Consumers Energy. Had something similar as well with uh, the other projects that we had going on in the, um, in the district. So we have to, uh, by board resolution, we have to approve this uh, for consumers. And does this need to be a roll call? So if you have questions for Mr. Cuneo, but that's the recommendation this evening. And, and if you get a motion in a second, we'll have uh, Ms. Nestor do a roll call vote. Okay. Can I hear a motion? Moved. Nick? Support. Support, support by Jake. Questions? Discussion? Okay. Yes. Chris yes. Jared. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Jake. Yes. Nick. Yep. And Barb. Yes. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Up next is our first reading. We talked about this earlier of our board operating procedures. Did you want to? Uh, uh, in January, uh, when the new board was seated, we had a representative from the Michigan Association of School Boards come uh, and speak with us. And she talked uh, about uh, the role of the board and how boards operate. And she suggested that it might be appropriate for the board to develop uh, operating procedures. These are, uh, in essence, kind of the uh, uh, guidelines for, for how the board would work together, uh, similar to administrative guidelines that we have with our policies that, that detail how our uh, 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 policies will be implemented in the district. Uh, these uh, uh, kind of uh, operating procedures really focus on um, the, the board bylaws, which are the section, uh, kind of the zero section of the, the board policies. And so uh, we put together a draft. Uh, we've, we've gone through various uh, versions of it and presented it to the policy committee uh, as a first reading. And uh, it's brought here tonight uh, for the board to, uh, to uh, see. And uh, it would not be voted on this evening, but would come back to the board in uh, June for action. Thank you. And I just add, um, this is a supplemental document. So we still have policy. This doesn't replace that. Um, so this, think of it as a supplemental. It's not, exhaust, it's not an exhaustive list of things by any, any stretch. And I think we see this as being a living and breathing thing. So we probably need to do at least an annual review. Probably makes sense to do that in January as part of an organizational meeting. Um, but as Dr. Matthews said, you know, based on um, what we heard from um, our consultant at MASB, we thought this would be a good thing. Uh, I know over the course of the last year plus, you know, I've had questions about things. Others have asked me questions about things, and I think. Um, we thought it made good sense to put the answers to those commonly asked questions down on paper. Yeah. So we all can all have an opportunity to provide input to it and get the document to a point where we all feel comfortable with what it says and can, um, can kind of abide by it going forward. So that's the intent. This is a very rough draft, as you saw in the, uh, in the packet. Um, but we've got the next few weeks for you to look it over, 
And um, so just to outline next steps, uh, I'd ask if you could send your feedback to me, um, I wanna say by Friday, June 2nd. Great, great day for a deadline, but. Um, and then I, I think what might make sense is for the policy committee to get back together the week of 6-5. Um, so I'll compile feedback, we'll get the policy committee back together to go through everybody's comments and see if we can't mash it all together into a single you know, updated draft so that we can have it included in the board packet Friday 6-9 and then we'd be ready to do a second reading uh, Monday 6-12, our, our regular June meeting. So if that makes sense to everybody, that's what I had in mind. But any other, so, so that, I think that's it for me, but any questions or comments about kind of what this is about and what the next steps are as I've just outlined. I, just, I want to thank Dr. Matthews for his leadership through this process, but also Jared's put in a great deal of work and um, I believe there to be very thoughtful word choices and positive intent in this document. Thanks, yeah, I agree. And thanks to Corey too, we slogged through our draft the other day. And, um, she's, as you know from our readouts tonight, is exceptionally busy right now. So we appreciate the time and the help to go through it. And so still a rough draft, but we hope we've got it to a point where it's easier to edit than to create from scratch. So we've done the creating from scratch part and now we, we can just edit from there. And so let me know your, your thoughts. The more specific you can be, the better. You know, this item should be taken out, this item should be added in, this item should read differently, and here's how I think it should read. That, that kind of specificity will really help us kind of bash it together and arrive at something that we're all comfortable with. So, any other questions or comments? Just a quick question. As yeah. a new board member, I was really confused. Um, I figured out that the second reading was the uh, policy because the last month was the first reading. Mm -hmm. But how was I, as a new board member, to know what that was? Sorry, to know what, what was the first reading first of board reading of policy? First reading policy board operating procedures. So the draft is included in our board packet. So by review of the board packet and then our discussion tonight, that gets the full board up to speed as to where we are with this draft and the next steps for the board to finish it and adopt it. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I called Nick and, I, and he explained it to me, so I was confused. Okay. Well, glad we got that cleared up. Any other questions? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, do you prefer getting the comments actually in the PDF file, or would you prefer them all laid out in an email? Whatever is easiest for you. Okay. It, do, it doesn't matter. Well, I, I did the former. I did yeah. That, so, but if you <laughs> totally have fine. Preference, I, if, yeah. If you want to comment in the document, that's fine. If it's okay. easier to just put it in an email, that's fine too. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate well, it. Make it easy for you guys. Yeah. If you're going to meet for a, an hour or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, up next is our Chromebook purchase. Ooh. Mr. Cuneo. Yeah, so thank you, Dr. Matthews. Uh, this is a, a refresh of, not a full refresh of, of Chromebook inventory for our one-to-one -one device initiative, but these are to essentially cover some of the wear and tear of some of the devices that just we can't fix anymore, okay? And, and so just so you know, uh, make the board aware of, um, you know, part of the 2019 bond issue is there will be various long-term replacements or, or full replacements by grade level uh, for the one-in-one -one device initiative that's been built into the scope of the bond. This is basically uh, for the, some of the repair and maintenance, some of the, for the items that we cannot repair and maintain, okay? And quite frankly, when we look at the breakage usage, it's really the middle school that seems to be the biggest issue. <laughs> that's not unique to Rockford schools, that's also with other schools as well. Um, so we do our best to try to make sure that we be uh, uh, cost efficient in, in repairing these, but, but these particular Chromebooks, um, yeah, we, we need to uh, replace what's out there. We do have allowances in the bond for that. So the recommendation is, is to purchase, uh, it is um, 300, the quantity of 300 Chromebooks from Presidio through the REMC Pricing mm -hmm. Consortium, which is allowable under our board policy and also allowable uh, for a bond issue as well. This will for $60,600 to be paid out of the 2019 bond issue. And that's the recommendation. Okay, can I have a motion? I as the parent of a middle schooler, I would like to move. <laughs> <laughs> move by Kelly, support. I will support that. Jay. I also have a middle schooler. So yeah. Thank you. Other questions or discussion? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, thanks everybody. 
Uh, last under new business is 2023 graduates. So we've provided the board with a list of the graduates from uh, Rockford High School, Rockford uh, in the uh, River Valley Academy, and the Rockford Adult Education uh, programs. And so uh, we bring these to you for your information this evening. Uh, as you know, we have uh, ceremonies coming up the, the, the re in, in the rest of the month, uh, and uh, we just wanted you to see the names uh, before uh, we got to graduation. Excellent. Very good. Can I make one comment? Sure. Sorry, I've been talking a lot. <coughs> the um, moving nature of seeing names on here, if you have a student that is graduating, is one thing. But as a board member, there are a couple students on this list that have come before this board or previous versions of this board for very difficult circumstances. Um, and we say it when we have these discipline meetings, it's, you know, an opportunity for them is usually made available to come back. There are two names on here that I recognize that it's super moving for me to see that we provided a way back. And it has a lot to do with the administrators in the room. You know, we glossed over credit recovery a little earlier with the summer learning program. But the fact of the matter is there's some on here that you know, could have been very, very different situations. And to see their names, you know, is uh, incredibly moving. Um, and, and I can't wait to see them at graduation just to say, told you so, you could do it. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I, I, you know, there are very few things in this school thing that moved the needle with me a great deal. This is one of those because it's, it, they're terrible situations generally. Um, and to see them, come on the other side, at least at still such a young age that maybe, you know, they can move forward in a positive manner. But um, some of you might recognize a name or two on there. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, I just want to thank the district for, and the board for continuing to invest in places like River Valley and the summer learning program. Whether or not it's federally funded is irrelevant in this case, um, but I, I would, want to say that out loud to the administration and the teachers who work with these students. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. All right, uh, we're on to old business, our spring policy update second reading. We'll turn to Ms. Wilson Crawford, who will uh, provide uh, the board with an overview of, of the, the process that's been gone through. Yes, so uh, we had a policy committee. We met with our, I met with our NEOLA rep, brought forth uh, to our policy <coughs> committee um, recommendations for updating policies. And as you'll recall from our last meeting, um, policies go through a revision cycle and we use NEOLA as our third party service provider for those board policies. We then bring them to the policy committee for a discussion and then bring them for a first reading and then a second reading here at this meeting. Um, so this evening, um, pending any questions you may have, the policies here are all revisions, so there aren't any new policies. There are just revisions to existing policies. Sometimes the memo will look different from this. Sometimes the memo will show a replacement policy, meaning that the policy is fundamentally changed. Sometimes it will show a new policy, a policy that we have never had before, that we will have never seen before. But for this spring update, all of these policies that are in your packet are exactly the same as you saw them last month in your packet, and they are all revisions, which means that um, as the laws change in the state of Michigan or the school code changes, or specific to this, um, how the policies you have here, uh, the use of tobacco has changed like societally, right? Like um, 10 years ago when this policy was initially written, um, maybe we didn't know what we know now about vaporized or inhaled um, tobacco through a vapor pen. Uh, and so you'll see some changes there kind of to move things into what the current practices are. And so um, most of this information is um, editorial in nature for this policy, for this policy update. It won't always be like that. Um, for example, uh, there is one area where we would be making a little bit of a fundamental change, and that's around the idea of um, suspension and expulsion, right? A little change in our practice there to kind of get in line with what we would hope for from like a family dignity and a FERPA per, um, 
perspective, and that um, is was at the recommendation of Dr. Matthews through our policy committee. So you should have had a chance to review all of these. Um, I didn't field any specific questions about policies between first reading and second reading, uh, and I don't think our policy chair did as well. And so um, with that, there's not very much more to say about this particular policy update. We will be back in the fall. That policy update uh, happens twice a year, once in the fall and once in the spring. And so this is just a regular course of business policy update for us. I just want to Thanks. comment that I thought the FERPA, that, that piece of it, that update, is exceptional. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we would ask the board uh, to uh, move this forward, and uh, we need a, a motion and a second. Yep, we have a motion to approve. Motion. Moved uh, by Christy, support. support. Support by Nick. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 That's everyone. All right, thank you very much. And we're on to recognition of visitors and hearing of people present. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to outline guidelines for public for the public comment portion of our meeting. First and foremost, we value and welcome your input and feedback. We believe a collaborative relationship between our schools and the community is essential to achieving our shared goals. Public comment at the board meeting is intended to give the community an opportunity to address the board on issues in the Rockford Public Schools. At our meetings, the board and individual board members will not directly respond to comments or questions that arise during the public participation portion of the meeting. If a follow-up is needed, the superintendent will contact the speaker for additional insight or to provide clarification. To ensure that everyone has an opportunity to be heard, we do ask you limit your comments to three minutes. This will help us accommodate as many speakers as possible and ensure everyone has an equal opportunity to express their views. Please be respectful in your comments and refrain from using inappropriate language or engaging in personal attacks. We want to create an environment where everyone feels comfortable expressing their opinions without fear of retribution or harassment. We encourage you to provide constructive feedback and suggestions for improvement. Your comments can help us to identify areas where we can improve our schools and better serve our students and families. Thank you for taking the time to share your thoughts. We appreciate your engagement. Look forward to working together to ensure that our schools continue to be a source of pride for our community. Lastly, public comment at our meetings is but one way to provide feedback and suggestions. It is certainly not the only way. Those who prefer other means to communicate can do so via email, uh, through our district website, by calling the superintendent's office, just to name a few. Thank you for that. And we had a few folks sign up to speak tonight. We'll start with Lily Davey. Is Lily here? Yes, she is. All right. Uh, right there. Right there. Perfect. Yep. I love skiing and I hope we have more of it. 
I am so glad I get to go to school. There are kids in the world that don't, and without school, I would have never had these opportunities I have now. I'm thankful for teachers, volunteers, and people that work in the office, the school board that, and the school board that cares about kids. The job probably isn't easy, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. All right, up next we have Linnell Buchanan. Board of Education, Dr. Matthews, Ms. Wilson Crawford, and Mr. Rand, thank you for having me tonight. And thank you for giving those interested in our community a chance to speak. Uh, while I've been a guest here at most of the board meetings, um, I did speak here a while ago, it was about 20 years ago, I think, when I was publicly acknowledging the RAF and thanking them for a grant I had received for our um, LEAF guides for a seventh grade LEAF project. Since then, our curriculum has changed a bit, quite a bit. And to meet those needs, we have reviewed several sets of curriculum for the sixth through eighth grade science classes, including the IQUIS curriculum by Activate Learning that was adopted by RPS and began uh, to be implemented, implemented in 2018. I want to take a moment to thank you for that, for taking an interest in science and how imperative it is for our students and their critical thinking skills. Now that we have fully implemented all of the units for IQUIS, I wanted to give you an update. We are now more closely aligned with our Michigan standards, which are based on our national standards. Uh, we as a, a department see more student engagement. There, it's based on uh, phenomenon-based science and hands-on inquiry rather than just hearing about science. Students are at the center of the classroom exploring how things occur in the real world through designing experiments, collecting data, and analyzing their findings. This changes the way students experience the world and works to build a sense of curiosity. How can we measure the impact of this? Once again, student engagement, but we are also seeing results in our MAP and NWEA scores taken three times a year. By the end of their eighth grade year, a majority of our students are scoring in the 60th percentile or above this is, an ex this is excellent progress, and this has, been, has significant weight. From the daily grind of the teacher's perspectives, the curriculum does once again meet our needs, but because of the inquiry-based hands-on lessons, the amount of prep time needed to implement with fidelity exceeds the amount currently offered at the middle school level. Circling back to the success of the curriculum, this is a testament to how strong our teachers are and their dedication for student learning. We have a lot of great things happening here at Rockford Public Schools. I want to thank you once again for your support so that we can continue to make success happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, up next we have Allison McDuffie. Allison? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. My name is Alan McDuffie and I am finishing up my 16th year teaching here in Rockford. I'm asked all the time why I became a teacher. My answer is, it's what I was meant to do. I come from a family of educators. My dad was a teacher, principal, and assistant superintendent in Greenville. My mom was a teacher and then a principal here in Rockford. She helped design and was the first principal at Meadow Ridge. I have a sister who teaches high school at Hudsonville, a sister who teaches here in Rockford at Cannonsburg, and a brother who teaches at Davenport University. I myself have taught alternative high school and now teach adult education in sixth grade. 
Just in my family alone, we have over 175 years of experience in education. Those years have taught us the most important thing an educator can do for their student, students is create an atmosphere of acceptance and comfort. If a teacher wants their students to learn, relationships have to come first. I don't know the majority of the teachers here in Rockford, but I do believe that the majority of us enjoy our students and the relationships we have built with them. I try my best to connect with each of my 50 kids on a daily basis, whether that be saying hi, asking how their day is going, or what their plans are for the weekend. I have students who love sports. I have a sixth grader who got a hole in one when he was like 10. Mowing <laughs> uh, lawns, dogs, braiding hair, and so many other things. Relationships are the foundation of any classroom. There's one thing I know about every teacher, staff member, and board member here in Rockford. We are human beings and not perfect. We make mistakes. We have hard things going on in our lives outside of our classrooms. <coughs> My students know that I love McDonald's Diet Coke. I have three kids and I love audiobooks. My students also know that this year I had to put my dog Willie down after loving him for 14 years. They could tell something was going on because they care about me. I told them about Willie and what I had to do and kids throughout the day came to me and gave me hugs and said how sorry they were. I know te teachers who have taught through losing a parent, going through a miscarriage, divorce, and cancer. A few weeks ago, I found out my own brother, um, his cancer is back and he'll be starting chemotherapy this next week. Myself, along with every other employee in this district, including the Board of Ed, try on a daily basis to do what is best for our kids here in Rockford. If, is every day fantastic? No. Nope. <laughs> um, but what would help teachers is knowing our community supports them <clears throat> through the wonderful days and not so wonderful. If you feel like something in your child's classroom might not have gone the way you think it should have, please communicate nicely with your child's teacher. Yes, Rockford Public Schools teachers are experts in our profession and teachers at heart, but we are also mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, aunts, and uncles, and at the end of the day, we are human beings. We are not perfect, but we care deeply about our students, your children. We love your kids and want them to do well in school and life. I ask you to remember that we are all imperfect human beings who are doing the best we can where we are. I'd also like to thank you guys for your continued support with adult ed and um, the Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> up next, up next is uh, Dwayne Critter. Dwayne Critter from Kent County. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen you guys. As much as I know you all want to hear from me, I'll, uh, I'll do the best I can to keep it brief not a seven minute speech like I gave you in the past. Uh, I'm specifically addressing the board at this point, none of the administrators or the superintendent. So uh, at the end of my comments, I'm gonna have a question. I'm gonna have three questions for the board members. So I may ask you to write them down or at least refer back to this video so you can respond. Several months ago, and prior to the vote and the approval of the school policies, I asked the board in a public forum such as this, how many of you have actually read the policies? I held them up. There are much more than these, by the way. I held them up and I said, how many of you have read these policies? The president answered, I had read them. I, t I, pr I pressured him. He said, no, I, I really haven't read them all. But nobody on the board said that they had read them. So nobody admitted to having read them yet. And yet later, weeks later, they were asked to approve them. So I asked this because this board is in the exact same position. Tonight, on, on the second reading, I venture to guess that many of you have not read all of them, and yet one month from now, you will be asked to approve those policies. They're, it's a stack of policies, folks. I mean, they are 40 hours it took me to go through them. So I'm asking you people, please, before you put your stamp of approval on these policies, read them. You might be surprised what's in there. Why do I bring this to your attention? In many of the policies, the participation of family, parents, and or community is listed as welcoming. Like you want to meet with the parents, you want to meet with the families. Reference policies 0144.2, 0123, 2411, 5313. And yet when it comes to meeting with the community, public, taxpayers, and so on, policy 0167, you continue to place restrictions. Now, in the first reading last month, we heard that this policy in particular was pointed out to the public that you guys spent time looking at this particular policy and yet you made no changes. I think this is very disappointing. 
those of you that understand this policy, it has reference to do with what we need to go through to speak at a meeting such as this. There are restrictions placed on us. So, I speak to you with the experience. I've come to many different board meetings throughout the state of Michigan. I've attended greater than 50 board meetings in 36 months. Other boards, including school boards, county boards, townships, and the like, are much more welcoming in that they do not place any such restrictions. Also, as a side note, many allow for comments both prior to and following the agenda items. This allows people to voice their opinions prior to the board making decisions and, and voting on, on issues on the agenda, as well as comments following the meeting, such as we are here, to, to speak to the issues that may have come up. So anyway, my questions are, I'm running out of time. <laughs> Why is the, what is the reasoning for the five-hour notification? How many other school districts in the KISD, or even in West Michigan, have a similar policy? And please give me one name of one other school in this state with a policy similar to this. Thank you. Okay, and last tonight is Andrea Jacobson. So last month we got to hear a lot of fantastic things about our orchestra program and tonight we have the privilege of seeing Miss Kilmore get recognized for the East Rockford Band. And I never thought it would be here but I have a band kid now so we're officially in it for band for Rockford for a few years. But she has been such an amazing leader and is a gem for our district. Um, I don't know who knows this but when your kids go to late for band camp, it's letters to home written on paper, sent in the mail, then you have to write one back, and you don't know what's going on. They can't email, they can't text, they can't call, they can't anything. And for a lot of sixth grade parents, this is very terrifying because we haven't sent our kids away for two weeks before. And she found all of our kids at camp and would email us and take pictures and tell us they were okay. <laughs> Because she gets it, and she loves the kids and the families. Sorry. We're getting it for camp again, and I'm having trouble. <laughs> but anyway, we are blessed to have her be with us, and I know she is so excited about our new hire at the high school program. And I thank the administration for continuing to support fine arts in this district, because a lot don't. And my kid has found his home with these groups of kids. And it's just like eSports or other groups that if you don't have these opportunities, you don't find your place. And our kids need their kids. So thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. All right. Up next is our superintendent remarks. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Folsom. Uh, I would like to express my appreciation to our Rockford High School administrative staff and teachers for supervising a very successful prom this past weekend. Uh, from all accounts, it was a wonderful event, as Olivia uh, mentioned uh, this evening, and everyone had a great time. I extend my appreciation because we often fail to consider the, the time and the effort that our administrative staff and teachers give to ensure events like this go well. Our students, especially those in leadership positions at Rockford High School, do a lot to prepare for this event, but our administrative staff and teachers who supervise the event should be thanked because they gave up a Saturday evening that they could have that could have been used in other enjoyable ways to help almost 1,000 of our high school students have a great event. So thank you, Mr. Hosford. Uh, last month, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, it was successful. Uh, nothing uh, we know of was broken at uh, the uh, uh, at Meyer Garden. Correct? Nothing that we know of was broken. And, and, uh, right and butterflies were not released into the wild. So. Uh, last, last month, a parent referenced a CNN student program that is shown on occasion in our middle school buildings. I suggested I had not seen it when I uh, had visited the middle schools, but I did a little research and found that a CNN current events program is shown on occasion in our buildings, uh, primarily when they're talking about current events. Uh, I watched several episodes and found it to be apolitical and specifically designed for middle school students. I understand that CNN can be perceived as having a particular slant on the news, 
Uh, but this short program, uh, designed especially for middle school students, was not political in nature, uh, uh, but focused on current events. But if you do have a specific question on this, I would encourage uh, you to reach out to middle school teachers or to the principal uh, to have a discussion about this uh, at, at our school. Uh, and then our Rockford uh, Public School Board of Education meeting is first and foremost a meeting conducted by the board to do the business of the board. The primary focus of the meeting is to ensure that we take action to ensure that uh, uh, bills are paid, that construction projects are scheduled, and that people are hired. Uh, however, the meeting also provides insight into the positive things that occur in our district. Uh, tonight, we're able to recognize an award-winning teacher, the efforts of our students in student competitions, and activity at both the elementary and uh, secondary levels. Uh, public schools provide our communities with many positive outcomes. There are times when we disagree on some issues, but when we focus on our students and remember that we open our doors to all students and families, we can find ways to reach compromise and find positive solutions for our community. And that's uh, my remarks this evening. Thank you, Dr. Matthews. Uh, with that, we are adjourned. Thanks, everybody.